Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusker here for another edition of the show. All right, so let's go to Switzerland now. So I told you, man, I'm doing a whole bunch of cool stuff here. So uh, Switzerland, Switzerland, not really a wine area that is that well known, but it, it does a really, um, it does make a decent amount of wine. So this particular wine I got uh, during a promotion that Central Market was having here in San Antonio. They were doing a whole bunch. I bought a lot. Of, actually, I bought a lot of wines from them. Uh, they, were, they had wines from all over the all over the world, like paired with like cheeses and stuff. I didn't really buy the cheeses. I just bought the wines because that's all I was interested in. But uh, some cool stuff. Matter of fact, uh, I might or might not do review of it, but. That Sulla or Sula brand from years and years ago from the in, from India. I think I had the Chenin Blanc that I reviewed and I actually liked it. There was a Sauvignon Blanc too. I bought both of those just because I you can't get them anywhere. But I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do reviews of those. I probably will. Anyway, so let's uh, let's talk about Switzerland and their winemaking traditions. So. I thought I had it in the notes. My memory is that they've been doing it for a few, like like six to seven hundred years. I don't think I put it in my little. I didn't put it in my notes here, but this wine is coming from the southwestern part of the country. The Rhone River runs through that. There should be a map coming up here any second. the The name of the grape on this is Fondant, which is the local name for Chasselas, and that is a grape. Uh, that's actually native to Switzerland. You can find it in France. Actually, I didn't realize this, but it's a wine that's made in also the Loire from the Puy sur Loire. Uh, it's combined with Sauvignon Blanc. I know it as a grape that's uh, somewhat, some more of a minor grape in Alsace, and it's also called uh, Gutadel. 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 I've been saying Gutadel, but it's Gutadel found that out. And in 1997, the acreage under vine for Chasala actually has been cut in half, along with Pinot Noir and Gamay have, have declined a lot. And it's, uh, these other grapes uh, have been really on the rise in the area. There's the valet, not like the valet at the, you know, when you go park your car, but V-L-A-I-S, A-O-C in Switzerland. There are 31 white and 22 red varieties that are authorized. It is the, the also the smallest registered vineyard in the world is in that area. It's Farinay. It has three plants with a total square footage or meters of 1,618 square meters. Now, see, it's the smallest vineyard in the world, the smallest registered vineyard in the world. So you, you can have a vineyard of two plants, I guess, in your backyard if you wanted to and call it a vineyard, right? The winery itself was founded by Edmund Guillard in 1885, the uh, Clos du Mont in Sion in Valais, uh, ne near, near the Clos du Mont. Uh, Les Marais was created, the wine itself was created in 1921 by his son, Robert. 1958, Francois takes over it says 1958, he takes, he, it just mentions his name and the, and the year. I'm not sure that's when he takes over, but that's when he buys effectively their most famous vineyard called uh, Clos Clo de Cocheta, and it is a very prestigious vineyard. It's like the equivalent of something like uh, Montrachet or Tokelon in Napa or... Yeah, just it's or the Doctor Vineyard in Germany, that kind of stuff. It's very, very well known, at least as far well regarded. So on the text sheet, it says there's three years of aging. It says guard for three years. 
Not sure what kind of aging. I can't find anything on their website nor anywhere else. And um, yeah, let's get into this. So they have a website and for uh, giard.ch and I'll have a link below for all that. But it's a, it's only in, I guess it's French Swiss because there's French and German Swiss. There's also a little bit of Italian in, involved in the country like on the border of Italy. But they don't have an English version. Actually, just, it, it was just a, it was just at the French flag. So it was a Fr it was French on the website, but there, and there was a little arrow, but you click it and nothing happens. So you can't like choose a language. So I have this extension on Safari on the Mac. It's called Translate Me. Um, it does a pretty good job of translating stuff. I use it when I need to. There was another extension for Safari uh, that I used to have, and it no longer works or it's no longer supported. And I had that extension for, God, like 10 years. And it does a really good job. But this is, I guess, the the next version or the, I guess, the next incarnation of it. I don't think, I don't remember if there was like a, um, a connection to it or not. But let's get into the wine. So, um, sorry, 2000... Where did I put? Oh, it's on the back. For some reason, on the front. 2017 uh, from Zion. When when you uh, when you do the translate, it translates S I O N to Z I O N. So I'm assuming it's pronounced Zion. So that's just like the 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 town that's the major area in Valais where uh, everything is where this is near. Matter of fact, um, I had shown this bottle of wine to somebody. And they got all excited because they actually knew where this was. Like it was like their families from that area. I was like, cool, this should be a good wine. So anyway, uh, let's see what else. Oh, I paid $29.65. And the reason it's a weird thing is uh, Central Market and HEB as a whole, they have like a discount if you buy six bottles of wine at the same time. And I, I bought like, I think I bought like seven bottles because it was all the cool stuff. So you get like 10% off. And let's see, that's it. Let's get into the wine. So if you watched last week's episode, it's not as a not, not such a deep gold color, but there's definitely a lot of yellow to it. In fact, it, it really just like, it's really, well, you can't see it on camera, but like you can see the color through the glass, but the, the foil is pretty much the same color. Pretty close. Actually, when you look on camera, it it looks like it looks like Strega or Galliano if you're not familiar with Strega. It has a, a really bright, almost greenish yellow to it. At least on camera it does. I know I got a green screen back there, so it it, it doesn't help, but if I put it even like here, it still has that greenish tint to it. Anyway, so let's get into it. So I know I probably had Shasla in the past. Um, in an Alsace wine. Again, I don't have a really our frame of reference of what exactly it's supposed to taste like or smell like. I know, don't touch your face, right? That's one of those things, I, have, I already knew this. I scratch my nose all the time. I already knew that before this whole stuff was going on, but I, I mean, I touch my face all the time. It's, it's hard not to when I, when I go out, so. But let's get back to this. More of a green apple, peach, white peach, orange blossom, a little bit of floral. I do get some caramel. So there might there might have been some oak aging to this. Like the aging might have been oak, not just like it was aged in a vessel of some sort. Also because of that color. Uh, it says three years of aging, but this is a 17. And I bought it last summer, so it couldn't have been three years of aging. Just realized that. So, but there might, there's probably at least a year's worth. So it also could be giving that. It's also a bit of, um, I don't know, it smells like there's, a carbonation to it. I don't think there is. I mean, if you can, you can't really, you can kind of see it in the bottle, but that's from the, that's from the argon gas that from the, from the Corbin. So 
But yeah, I mean, there's no actually gas in this. Touch of kind of a white pepper thing. So if I was blinding this, I mean, the color would, would be a little off for it. But if I got that white pepper, I might be going Gruner. But it doesn't have the other stuff that would lead me to Gruner. Like, that's one of those things when you go down your deductive tasting path and you smell like, oh, that one thing. You go, oh, it must be this. And like, no, it's just, it's, it's not like the rock. It's not like the major component. It's just like, yeah, it's just kind of there. But other than that, it's not super highly aromatic. Let's just taste it. So on the flavor, on the palate, it reminds me a little bit of what a Viognier tastes like. There's a lot of orange and orange blossom, a little floral there, uh, the orange characteristic. There's a bitterness to it. Not that I would get that from Viognier, but kind of the flavor. A lot, of, a lot of times in Viognier, I get that, get that flavor. I also get orange a lot from things like Chenin Blanc and other things. But um, the color kind of would, if I was, if I was just tasting this, I would think, oh, it must be maybe it's a California Viognier because, as I have found out recently, uh, they acidify Viognier a lot in California. They really don't need to. I mean, I know why because California. I'm sorry, Viognier. Um, is not a very high acid grape. So when you make wine that drops acid a lot, it tends to taste flabby, doesn't taste fresh. So you'll add acid to kind of give it that extra bit of freshness. And that happened to me at that Psalm retreat that I talked about a couple episodes ago that I had a v we had a Viognier in a group tasting, and uh, I was like, this is not Viognier. The acid is too high. And they're like, no, it's this. I'm like, okay. And I asked somebody else a few weeks later, I'm like, are you saying they acidified? I'm like, yes. He goes, yes, they do. I'm like, okay. So I now know that it's not uncommon. Anyway. Hmm. I'm recording this during the day. There's a FedEx truck outside. I don't think I have anything from FedEx coming. Nope. Anyway, <laughs> there's a little bitterness to it. I don't know why I'm looking there. A little bit of bitterness to it. The orange is the driving force as far as flavor. There is a little golden apple instead of the green apple I was getting on the nose. There's that floral component of bitterness. There's um, not really a sweetness to it, but the condition of fruit is more of a riper condition of fruit, peach, that kind of stuff. Uh, I like it. If I'm going to start comparing all the wines I'm doing in one session, I, I've only had two wines so far, but I like that uh, Carmena really a lot. This one I like a lot. I think I like it because it's just something indif different and I don't really drink a lot of this ever. So if I had this, I had this in a restaurant, I'd be probably really happy that I had something like this. There's definitely a richness of flavor. Um, yeah, I, it's really delicious. And it's unlike anything I've ever had. I don't think I've ever had Shasala by itself. I may have like once some point in time, but it, I don't really have a memory of what it would taste like. But yeah, I mean, I'm just stoked that all the stuff I'm going to be doing in these ne next few episodes. I like it. You should check it out. So this one might be a little bit more... Uh, you might find it might be a little bit easier to find this one than last week's episode. I'm not sure how much is produced of this versus the other stuff, but um, just because it comes from a country that we get more imports from in general than than from Turkey. But yeah, if you see this, you should try it out. It's really good. Anyway, if you find it, you should get it. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Click, there'll be links above. Yeah, over there. Links above to friend me up and all the other kind of stuff. Links below in the description about everything. There's a PayPal link down there. If you want to throw, through duck, throw a few ducats my way, you're more than welcome to do that. 
and we'll see everyone again next time.